Hello, hello everyone. Good evening. Afternoon, depending on where you are. I am trying to find um, myself so I can see your comments. Why don't I see myself? I have found myself. Hello. Hi, everyone. I see my camera is a bit um, off centered. And because of the stones on my desk. Um, oh, other way around, I think. Like this. Hello everyone. Now it's even worse. No, it's better. It's better. Almost there. Hi Honora. Hi Jane. Hi Gretje. Okay, I think this is it. I can see all of your comments. I think if my iPad, iPad stands in its place. Hi, Yvonne. Good morning or evening or afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, I'm Deborah for Elizabeth Craft Designs and I um, was asked by Els to uh, do the live for this evening. Uh, well, in Holland it's evening. Um, thanks, Sue. Um, and um, to make something uh, with the new Art Journal Specials release into the woods. Well, of course I want to do that. Uh, because it's a great collection and I love to work with it. Um, in the meantime, I'm watching the everyone say hello. Hi everyone. Um, Els asked me also to uh, do a, a flip through of my journal or journals um, <clears throat> of what I made so far. Um, so let's start with that. Well, uh, some of the things I'm going to show you, I will show you, I have already posted. So perhaps you know them, a few of them. The pages I made uh, I haven't shown so far so big surprise no uh, this is one of the things I will be making tonight uh, I did an earlier live with these journal cards and this time I made a specimen card with it um, and the fun thing I want to show you is how you can stamp um, in mirrored image because the stamps are looking to the right or to the left but if you want to use them as a specimen card you have to um, mirror them there's a really easy way to do that it's not my idea I got it from uh, someone on YouTube I'm sorry I don't remember her name um, perhaps most of you already know how to do this but this one I will be showing you tonight how to make this well, this is a little um, mushroom dye I dyed with shrink foil. And I can also show you this. <coughs> thanks, Katie. Uh, thanks, Cerise. Uh, or Teresa. I hope I pronounced it uh, right. So, let's show you what I've made so far uh, using the Into the Woods collection. Um, well, I made these journaling cards. I love to make the journaling cards. They're so much fun, easy to do, and they don't take a lot of time to make. So this one is with the stamps from the new collection. Um, I watercolored it. And this is one of the um, previous uh, collection from the Picture It. Um, so you can combine them. 
Well, this one, of course, is one of the beautiful mushroom stamps I watercolored. And one of the dies in the back. This one as well. This is one of the dies. And this is one of the leaves I watercolored as well. The paper also comes from the um, Into the Wood collection. It's called Wanderlust. Um, this one, uh, these two are the same. This one is a bit bigger. This one I'll be working on tonight. So, um, And this one is also with the new stamps and uh, I watercolor them. I love to watercolor. So those are the journaling cards I made already. Well, Into the Wood, uh, the Into the Wood collection has two um, TNs and a square one and a rectangular one. And uh, until we had the rectangular one for the first time, uh, the square one, I mean, I love this size. Then this size came and now I can't choose. So I, I have several pages in each one of them. So to give you an idea what you can do with them. And as you see, there are blank pages in there as well. So I have to fill them up. This is one of the new pages I made. Um, I haven't posted this yet, so surprise. And um, I used um, the Wanderlust paper from the Into the Woods collection uh, with some uh, new dies. This one is an older one. And this is a stamp from the Sidekick collection from Esther. So as you can see, you can combine all ECD materials. Els did that in the um, live last Friday as well. No, Wednesday. Um, this one I also haven't posted yet. I love the snail. They're in our garden a lot like, uh, right now. Uh, these two are the um, new die, the new stencil on the background. Again, the paper from the Into the Wood collection. The tree is from a previous um, winter line from them. This is the tree that's in the Into the Woods collection. I cut the stem off so it looks like a bush. And of course, this stamp can't be missed. Yeah, I know, Therese, uh, Therese, it's really hard to choose. It depends on my mood on which one I want to work. Yes, and the snail is so cute, Brooke. I love every animal when they're on paper, most of them in real life as well, but insects and snails and stuff like that, I only like on paper <laughs> so then I use them a lot <clears throat> this one I haven't posted as well um, the background um, I made uh, just with plain watercolor white watercolor watercolor and I stamped the triangular um, wooden house several times on the paper then I use one of the new stencils to make these patterns um, these are the trees cut out several times. This one is a new background die. Of course, the tree stump again. They crawl on rocks. Yes, they do. <laughs> and I love those with the, with the houses on the back. Um, in our guard, uh, garden, we have a lot of those. Well, in Holland, we call them uh, naaktslakke. Uh, they don't have a house. They're a little bit gross and they're really slimy as well. So, hmm. okay. Um, this one is um, just from a piece of watercolor paper, uh, which I sprayed uh, Distrex Oxide spray on and then stamped on it. This one is the big, um, the big tree with the swing. I cut off the swing uh, two times the mushroom and another part. So you don't have to use the whole die Entirely, you can um, cut pieces out and use separate parts of them. Thanks, Jane. This one I posted, I think, last week. Um, with one of my favorite stamps from the new release. 
the pocket is from the um, picture it collection and the tag inside is a stamp from one of the earliest uh, earlier uh, stamp sets from Charlene with um, it's a Halloween stamp set I don't know is it a Halloween stamp set or is it the let me see if I have it on hand yes I have it's this one uh, and it's called mm, Halloween Party. I think it, that one's on sale right now. Um, again, paper from the Wanderlers paper set. And as you can see, these are my blank pages. I still have to fill them. And some of the papers are so beautiful that I don't know yet what to put on them because I love them actually the way they are. So that's my square journal. Yeah, our slugs, the one, the snails without the house, then I mean slugs indeed. They're yuck. <laughs> the one with the houses are quite cute, but the slugs, they're like just one big moving pile of slime. I don't know. Hmm. Um, well, this is the square one, uh, the rectangular one, <clears throat> my first page, and this is going to be um, um, a TN just for autumn themed things. That's why I started the front page with uh, the stamp autumn. And of course the beautiful, oh, my leaf is folded in the middle. So that's the first page. And some uh, leaves from um, the summer special, the okay, I will look it up in a minute. <laughs> uh, this one I posted last week, uh, again, um, with one of the stamps from Esther's Sidekick collection, um, the mushrooms, and this is the doily. I thought this was a snowflake at first, but it's a doily, so you can use it all year round. Um, and these mushrooms, I will keep them in a little bit closer. Um, yes, Sonora, I hate them too. <coughs> <coughs> I made um, with watercolor paper, just spraying distress oxide ink on it, then dabbing some of the um, distress oxide ink on there with drops and then just dropping some gloss on top of it. And done is your page. This one was the first one I posted. This one, um, oh, I'm gonna look it up. I can't stand it then, I don't know what it's called again. Let me see. Home Jungle, of course, it's from the Home Jungle set. And the cutest little deer. And I wish I had this cabin uh, in real life because it looks really cozy. Um, this one I made um, combining uh, the stamp set um, and with watercolor again. And this one is an actual uh, drawing not made by me, but uh, out of a vintage book. Um, and I thought it matched the colors of the background. So that's why I combined it this way. And again, some pages I need to fill. And which, this is the page we're gonna work on tonight. See, I missed a lot of the comments. Uh, Ginger, the color of the journals. Yes, they are the. These are the two ne new uh, TNs from the Into the Woods collection: uh, a rectangular one and a square one. Um, Hi, Linda. Goedenavond. Thank you, Terry. Uh, let me see. 
if I missed um no, that's it. Okay. Well, let's get started. First a sip of coffee. Before it get co gets cold. Yes, it does, Dolores, doesn't it? But it has to be had a, have a fireplace in it, so it, it's really cozy and warm. Okay, let me see where's the page. This was the page I was working. I wanted to work on tonight. So let me put these aside. <clears throat> um, well, first of all, I will show you how to make this journaling card because we're going to put it... We're going to attach it to the page like this. Um, so it will stick a bit out, but I don't mind. I like that. I like to be my journals to be chunky and different sized. So that doesn't matter. Um, so first of all, you need um, any kind of die. I use the one from Esther again. And I had it here somewhere, so I could show you from which set it was. Um, this, this is the die I actually mean. And it's from, uh, it's number 1836, Sidekick Essentials number 14. So you take this die, you cut it out of the paper. I cut it out twice because I couldn't choose um, and as you can see when you cut it out of the paper this one is um, a whole piece this one is cut out so it comes out like this and this this is paper as well but since I want to make a specimen card um, I wanted um, the window to be on the back side as well so you can see right through it well I'm not that good uh, at carving this out so I use the same die to cut the same part out on the back side as well and I will show you how I did it because I it was it's really easy when you know how to do it um, let me see this one doesn't fit but I used my uh, big sidekick uh, my big um, Sizzix to uh, cut it out, but I can show you how I did it. I need a piece of paper. Well, you, when you put the die on the paper the first time, it will cut it out like this. You get a... I will do it so I can show you. Just a second. Sorry. I thought I cut something out, but I can't find it anymore. So I will do another one. But my die cut machine doesn't um, fit on my desk because I have too much stuff on my desk. And I thought I had one already cut out. If you hear some screaming on the background, that's my son. He's playing games, uh, online gaming with his friends. And sometimes he's a bit too enthusiastic. So sorry for the background noise. Because I have to do it quickly. Didn't go. So when you cut this out, uh, you will get this. But when you fold this in half, you see the background of this. That's okay, but since I wanted to be it a specimen card, I want to uh, cut the back side as well. So how do you do this? It's really easy. Um, you lay. This comes out. Then you turn it upside down. And you place it when you um, slide it over the paper. This You will feel that this line, this cutting line, grips or a uh, folding line grips on the fold it made here 
So when you slide it over the paper, just upside down, you feel that it, it, it sticks in the folding line. Then you place it down. You get a piece of washi. Where's my washi? Lost my washi again. Oh, thanks, Sue. <laughs> well, the things he come, the sometimes he's a little bit aggressive in his play because he's playing some kind of police game. Um, so he's yelling a lot. And it's not really angry, but when you don't know what's happening, it looks like there's a fight going on here in the house. That's not the case. So, you can also look at it like this way. But you can feel when the line grips on the folding line. And then you put washi on top of it. So it stays in place, then it's stuck. Then you place it on your... Um, sandwich for in your machine and the important thing that you have to look at is that you place um, the die just this part and a little bit of this part on the edge of your um, sandwich your cutting block so this is bigger normally then you put it like this and then you run it through your machine and you can run it through completely um, then it just cuts out this part and because this is the same and you don't have this part so it don't uh, doesn't cut off the the tab on the top um, it will cut out just the window on both sides and then you can fold it in two and you have your specimen card um, so that's how I made these. Just an extra tip to save you some paper. Like I did trying to get it out. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. Now we're gonna use... Um, I will show you. Because this is the stamp the right way like you when you put it from uh, you take it from the your stamping block and you put the stamp down but this one is mirrored and i will show you how i did that um but first you may choose because these are these are quite small cards i thought i'd use the snail again or the little squirrel and you may choose uh, which one you like? Would you like the snail or would you like the squirrel? You could also make it with, with the larger animals, but because I want to keep it in the card, um, I thought we used the squirrel or the snail. You may choose. Which one do you want to see? Drum roll. Snail. Squirrel. Snail. Squirrel. Acorn. Squirrel. Okay. Sorry you voted for the snail since i made this one most of you are saying squirrel so we're going to use the squirrel the principle is the same the only thing you do need is a jelly plate um, perhaps it can be done on other ways as well but for this one you have to have a jelly plate and or a gel plate and there are several sizes that you can buy. <clears throat> um, you have the big ones because they are, well, quite expensive, I think. Um, but you also have the smaller sets with the small um, shapes. 
for this one I used the square one and I really if you don't know them yet they're really cute you can do a lot with them but most of the time I forget I have them so how are we going to do this okay you take your stamp and you take two stamping blocks or something where you can put the gel plate on because this is going to be a stamp as well so stamping block gel plate on it another stamping block your stamp just put it on there can you see what i'm doing because i think the stones in the background might be a little bit hard to see let me put a paper um andrea thanks um this is a this is a, a paper from the wanderlust paper from the into the woods paper set it's this one i cut a part out of it sorry which this is one and this is a, a really big one and it's special for on your crafting table um it's hard to see yeah i thought okay i will show you put for this part a little white paper underneath it so this is your stamping block with your gel plate on it and this is your stamping block with your squirrel on it so first you stamp the stamp on the normal way then you get a normal image like this so we will use this and we'll cut this one out like so but now since we want to uh, do it both ways we have to mirror this image and it's really easy you just take your um, stamping ink um, just stamp your ink on your stamp then you place your stamp on your gel print don't push it too hard because um, it's like a silicone thing so it moves a little bit if you push too hard it will slip and your lines will get blurry I don't think if that's gonna work now you can see that the image is transferred on my um, gel plate and now I will stamp it on the paper I don't think the lines are gonna be black enough but we will see and you just stamp this one as well as a regular stamp you take it off and ta-da aren't they cute and so easy and the lines of your mirrored stamp will be a little bit fuzzier um, because of the material of the gel um, uh, gel plate it's silicone so it doesn't get that sharp edges like your uh, normal stamp would um, if that bothers you you can always tra always trace the lines with a black uh, pen to make them more sharp more black if you want to it's so easy yes Katrina I thought it would um, not be as black as well but that's because of the material of the gel plate okay so the only thing you need is a stamp a gel plate it doesn't have to be a big one and perhaps you can use other silicone like materials as well i didn't try that but this is yeah well it's it's like yeah silicone so i don't know if it works with other materials as well but this is so easy so you can mirror your stamps okay <clears throat> so since it's um versamark 
uh, first of all, I'm clear. I need to dry this. Uh, this needs to dry a little bit before I can watercolor it. And I will clean my stamp. I put it away before I lose it. Okay. Um, so we want to place this, these two squirrels, on one of these cards. And I will put this for a minute under here. Which one will I like? I will use this one. I will use this one later. Um, to make it more sturdy, I use the blank piece of acetate to put here in between, where uh, so that I can put the, in this case, snail or later on the squirrel on top of it. So just your yes, Belinda, that's possible as well. Yes, uh, Dolores, this way you can. Um, because you stamp it and you stamp it again, you can mirror it. Mirror it. Yeah. Let me have my. Oh, oh, that was my double-sided tape. So now we're gonna put the acetate on the. This is not the tape I want. Where is my other tape? Hmm. Am I in frame? No, I'm not. Sorry, guys. I've had two, you have five. How are you still standing? <laughs> yes, it's really... It's fun, but I can imagine it's exhausting. I think children are much more active nowadays. I don't know why, but they're on the move more. So. Then you place the acetate. And I got the wrong piece because it's too big. So you can cut a little piece off. So, and now we can close the card. Don't put tape on here because this will stick out uh, on the back. So if you put tape on there, you will see. And these are so easy and fast to make. I'm so glad my children, I have two smaller nieces and I love them, but my children are a bit bigger. They're 15 and 13. And every time I've been to my nieces, I'm so glad my children are bigger, <laughs> that they're not that small or young anymore. And there is your basic specimen card with a window you can see through. Okay, and now it's a little bit sturdier because otherwise when you cut this out, it's really flappy. So I think the, is my ink dry? Yes, it is. So now we're gonna color the squirrel. No, I'm not gonna color it. Sorry guys. First of all, I'm gonna, um, <coughs> use a stencil on this page so it can dry and it's so hard to choose because i love all the stencils and there's one more in here from one of the first sets so if you thought hey wait she's got five i only got four that's right uh, this one is one of the first stencils um ilsa and charlene brought out with the art journal special so let me see which one do I want to use. I want to use this one. Mm. 
Yeah. Well, you, instead of acetate, um, you can you can also use um, uh, the packaging, the plastic packaging uh, of um, your stamps or whatever. Um, I think this one is actually from something I bought, which was like a, a box on uh, around it, and I used this plastic uh, for it. So more than one way to get to your acetate. Okay, let me see. Um, since um, this one is orange and my background is a little bit gray and brown, um, my squirrel is gonna be brownish. I um, want to make it a little bit, um, how do you say, glossy, fancy, shiny because I'm afraid otherwise the page will be a little bit dull. So I want to use my spatula in the meantime. I want to use, uh, this is from Finnebear Effect Paste, Golden Dragon. It's really shiny. Um, no, I'm not going to use this stencil. Why not? Because the flakes in here are quite big and they don't get through the stencil. So I'm going to use another stencil, otherwise it's a waste of my paste because I want those chunky parts of the flakes as well. I think I'm going to use this one. Yes, I like this one better. Um. Yeah, Ruli, you don't have to get everything at once. And you can use the previous stencils as well. And one of my pages, I use the rock, I think it's called rock stencil from the first uh, collection. So. Use what you have, you can't get everything. And of course, Christmas is coming up. And I think for people in America and Canada, I think it's tradition for Thanksgiving to give each other presents as well. In Holland, we uh, celebrate Santa Claus. So that's a perfect time to, if you may ask or make a wish list for what you can ask. I always think that um, these kinds of things are really nice to ask for a birthday or Christmas or whatever. Especially to people who know um, you quite well and know how much you love to craft so this goes in a big bowl of water clean off my spatula and we can let this dry while we color our squirrels. And I will get a little piece of paper. Do you have some white cardstock here? Yes, we do. So I'll get my, nope, I already had that. sip of coffee oh it's iced coffee by now mm -hmm. a 
let me see. We want a little bit of water. And I think the delay is really bad. So sorry if I react quite late on your... Um, and I missed a lot of comments. Yeah, well, Claudia, I was on um, last weekend. I was on the uh, art journaly. Uh, it's a craft fair in uh, uh, in the Netherlands, which one I uh, which was the first one in quite a while since Corona uh, break broke out. There were people there with those shopping trolleys. The trolleys were full, and they had even extra bags with them they were full like I was like how are you how are you paying for that oh Dolores crafting is so much fun but a big warning it's really addictive um, let me see Okay, uh, let's color our, our, our squirrel. I think I make it brown for the basic. I'm just gonna start with the, his belly. That is not smart. I'm gonna make some room on my palette. So we make his belly light brown because we want a cute squirrel. A bit of his cheek as well. And of course this one will be the same because it's the same squirrel. Am I still in frame? Yes I am. Of course, you can do this with <coughs> with gouache or um, alcohol markers or color pencils or whatever medium you like to use to color uh, with. At the moment, I use my watercolor really much. And I'm saving because I really like Daniel Smith watercolor, but they're really expensive. So I'm saving bit by bit. Every couple of months I buy um, a new tube and I have a friend who does the same. And every couple of times we send each other uh, a nap with uh, a color so we can split the um, the tube normally I would color a little bit more um, patiently but I want to finish this page and the journaling card so I'm a bit on the throttle with my watercolor. <laughs> yeah, precies, Ruli. Je moet ook wat de wensen overhouden. Well, that's not a problem. There's so many gorgeous stuff and materials out there. 
every time you think, or at least I think, well, now I have everything I need, one of my favorite brands comes out with something new, which made me think, oh, that's cool as well. But sometimes enough is enough, right? Sorry for that noise. Um, I have a hamster on um, in my room. Belongs to my son, and it's right by and behind me. And since it's getting dark, he's getting awake, and he's uh, he <coughs> he has uh, this um, spinning wheel in his cage, and he's running in it. So if you hear something ticking, that's the hamster. Dolores, where are you from that you think COVID is? Because in Holland, everything is um, getting, well, back to normal. I always like to make a little bit of shade or um, so that the squirrel looks a little bit more realistic. Well, I don't know if squirrels are looking like this, but I like them better this way. So when you want to do this, always start with the lightest color first. And when you work uh, a little bit wet, when you go over with the darker color, like this, the color, uh, because of the the, um, the paper is still wet, it will run more uh, smoothly into each other. And if you see lines and you don't like that, then you can always blend it a little bit more with just water. See? And now the line is gone. Okay, we will. We want a little bit pink for his snout. Ooh, that's too pink. That's way too pink. Why is that so pink? And his nose. And the inside of his ear. That's a little bit too pink for my taste, but hmm. figure something out. What color should we give his tail? Hmm. Dark brown. Where's my itty bitty tiny pencil? That's way too much water in there. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Thanks guys. Well, it's not the squirrel, the squirrel and all the animals, by the way, are cute. Normally I, um, Elizabeth Craft Design, eh, Josette um, designs those 
uh, cute princess and prince and animals. I don't have the patience to put them together, so... But Els made some cards and a journal page Wednesday. I really like those. So perhaps, you never know. Okay, for now my squirrel is done. And... Let me see. <clears throat> I'm gonna cut him out. I have no idea what time it is. Okay. We have still some time left. So we're gonna fussy cut him out. Like so. And we're gonna make a specimen card out of him. Or for him. One little squirrel coming up. Ooh. Oh, that was close to his ear. Did you see that? Always almost cut off his ear. That was not meant to happen. Not meant to. Come on. Tuck your chin in. This almost there, just his little feet. His tail. Then just his ears and we're done with the squirrels. That was his head. Sorry, guy. Sorry for the headache. Okay. One scroll and one for the back. Clean up. This one I have to clean later. Okay. Let's see. How are we? Do we want to put a stamp here or a piece of paper? Let me get the stamps from the set. Sorry guys, I have this big desk and it's always too small. But I think I'm not the only one with that problem. I want to use one of the stamps, but since I want it in my journal, I will use the squirrel like this, so you can see the page through. And I think I will use... this stamp set. Let me see. And what color paper should we use on that? What matches with this? Is this dry already? Yes, it is. Hmm. What color paper should we use, guys? Is that too yellow? 
No, that actually might work, but it's not yellow on the back. And I need one yellow at the back as well. So I'll show you why. Okay, I'm going to glue this together and I will show you why I'm doing this. Um, because since it's a see-through specimen card, um, if I just stamp on the back, you will see the um, back side of the paper on the back because it will see through here. So what am I going to do? I am going to stamp. Like so. This is a bit tricky because this ink needs to dry a little bit. But I'm going to do it any anyway. That's what I was afraid. So I'm going to tear around the stamp. And I have to be really careful that I don't... Um, normally I would let this dry a bit. So I could... I can... Um, grab onto the paper more easily without squishing the stamped image. But since we don't have that time, we won't. Okay, we're gonna distress it a little bit because I don't like those white edges from the paper. And now it's on the back. Let me see if what I wanted will work. No. Hmm. Uh, that wasn't suppose what I had in mind. Now I'm taking another piece because if this can flip around and I want the same stamp on the back but because I shouldn't have glued the papers together. Sorry guys. <laughs> I have this all the time. I have this idea in my head. I work it out and then I halfway or when I'm almost done I figure out nope that wasn't how it's supposed to go. But hey, sometimes great ideas come from making mistakes, right? Okay, this is about the same size. So I'm going to ink this as well. <clears throat> and stamp this one as well. Like so. And now we can glue it on the specimen card. Like so. Put the scroll on there. You have to hold this down because it's on acetate, otherwise it will lift up again. Now we can rotate it and put the same images on the back. So if it flips around, it doesn't matter because it has the same text and the same squirrel. And of course you can always, sometimes you can see a little bit white line um, because of the fussy cutting, but 
isn't this cute? Okay. Like so, and now we're going to finish the background. I like this one. This is the snowflake die, which is uh, the same as the stamp set. And I still haven't found the time to order some double-sided tape, so I'm still using my glue and just putting some dots here and there so it will stay down. Like so. And then we are going, uh, why does it stay put? Stay down. And don't throw these parts away. You can always use them again for a different background or on a card. And do we want something in the back here as well? Something orange or perhaps a mushroom? Hmm. I need something in the back there. Would this be nice? Or do we want something yellow? Because I have yellow as well. I think the yellow is cool. Like so. And the same as with the snowflake, just put some dots here and there. You don't have to put it, glue it down all the way. It gives more dimension to your page as well this way, because that everything is glued down. Yes, I thought it was a snowflake, but it's a doily. I think most of the design team thought it was a uh, snowflake. Okay. So, I think it's about time. Um... I will finish the page later on. I will put some, um, how do you call it? Chain, a <laughs> uh, little chain on here and I will, so that I can attach it to my page. So I will make a, a hole through it. Um, and I think I will put one of the other animals here. Um, and I will post a photo, a photo of the finished page tomorrow. Um, I hope you enjoyed the live. I will show the results. Uh, so I will show the result tomorrow. I hope I give you some ideas on what you can also do with your journal um, pages or like this cute gift card or journaling tag or whatever. So. Um, there's more than just making journal pages. You can use the dies and the stems on so many different ways. Thank you all for watching. Um, and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>